here, and if you've been following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, you know that I've been working on Lilith from Borderlands. I will debut Lilith at Haven Con April 4th and 5th. Make sure to get your tickets and come see us. Now, my Lilith, I'm going with the cell shade look, and it was a little tricky for me to get it just right. First, I grabbed some black acrylic paint, and I started painting on my chaps. The paint was okay. It looked gray instead of black and it kind of started to bleed out and I was actually pretty disappointed with it. Then I discovered Permacet Textile Paints! This is actually used for uh, screen printing but I just painted it on and it worked wonderfully. It was really difficult for me to find Permacet. If you're here in Austin, go to uh, Jerry's Artorama on 35 and they have a huge selection of all different kinds of pigments. That's all I really know where to get it in Austin. So if you're not in Austin, you might want to go to your specialty craft store in town because I don't think Michaels has it. The thing about Permacet is that you have to heat it in order for it to cure correctly and become permanent on the fabric. If you don't heat cure it, then it can wash out in the wash. So here are my chaps. I took a pair of leggings and I cut out the crotch, basically. I'll wear another pair of leggings underneath um, to match what Lilith wears, but these are the chaps. The thing about cell shade is that you outline pretty much every line and any line that could add definition to your character. For instance, on my pants, my seams are all lined and dare. And the top here, I have the top linings. And then on the pants, I have made lines where wrinkles would be on the chaps. And as you can see, I just basically took a paintbrush and painted on all my lines. With Permacet, I didn't need several coats as much as I really needed to um, smooth out my lines, if that makes any sense. I mean, you're painting on fabric, and fabric's not all like super smooth like paper is, so you kind of get bumps and grooves as you're painting along, so that's mainly the difficulty I had with the Permacet. As you can see, the Permacet is actually pretty thick. It's holding a peak pretty well on its own. I would say it's the consistency of putty or maybe even oil paint. To heat set the Permacet, you have to use one of a few different techniques. Most of the techniques involve some kind of dryer mechanic that is used specially for screen printing, but since I don't have that, um, I use a hand iron. After you're done painting whatever you're painting, uh, let it dry for at least 24 hours. That way the ink won't smudge and it won't ruin your fabric and it won't ruin your iron and just your life will be way happier if you just wait 24 hours. For this ink and this application and this project, I didn't have any issue with the ink bleeding onto my iron or onto my ironing board. So that wasn't really a concern for me. If it is an issue for you or if you're afraid it's going to be an issue, just use a sheet of tissue paper on the bottom and on the top. It will protect everything and it'll still be able to heat without catching fire if you do it right or wrong, whatever. So how do you heat set your Permacet ink? You turn your iron on to the highest possible setting. Mine would go to cotton. You wait for it to get hot and then you just like that. Now it's best to keep your iron moving a little bit so that you don't scorch your fabric and you don't scorch the um, ink as well. I um, left it on for a while on one section and it started smoking but it didn't catch fire and it's not broken. So um, go by what I say and not what I do and move your iron and don't let it sit there while you go and change your tragus piercing or you know whatever. From what I can tell on the internets, you need to heat your ink up for two to three minutes with the hand iron. It's a little difficult because you don't want to scorch the fabric. So I'd heat it for a bit, I'd go to another section, I'd go back and heat it some more, I'd go back and kind of heat things in section. The idea is that it will set your ink to where it won't wash out in the wash. It'll fade in the wash if it's not cured correctly. I'm not exactly sure what to tell you whether or not my curing worked because I'm afraid to try it. But what I can tell you is that it does feel like it worked in some capacity or another because the texture changes. As I was ironing this, I could tell my lines were more becoming flush with the fabric. Um, it was like they're 
meant for each other <laughs> as opposed to the places that weren't heated before they were still kind of rigid and you could tell it was painted on top of the fabric rather than them being as one so next up with Lilith I have to do her yellow hoodie sweater thing and I have to manually color this gorgeous wig here I need to cut it and then color it with Sharpie to get the right Lilith wig because I want to do it myself I don't want to buy a wig that's already been done by someone else do you have any suggestions on permacet on any textile paints what we should do is there a better way to heat cure the ink because let's face it this was just a pain in the butt it took me like two hours to feel like I actually did something with heat curing this as always be sure to give this video a big thumbs up share with all of your cosplay and Lilith Borderlands gearbox loving friends don't forget to subscribe to the weird girls YouTube channel and don't forget to come see us at Haven Con here in Austin April 4th and 5th Haven Con has a magic tournament with prizes a costume contest weird girls will have a booth there we'll be doing a couple of panels and the voice actors for Zuko and Korra from Last Airbender and Legend of Korra are both going to be there. Exciting! <laughs>